So they have been doing a survey of a 2009 narrowboat. Built from 10 millimeter steel on the bottom plate, six on the sides and five for the tops. 10, six, five, a relatively common configuration. Now this is a boat that's coming out of charter service and it's coming to the market for the first time. And the boat has never been fitted with anodes. Now that's the charter company's policy. They build the boats, they charter them, they sell them once they're done. It's an interesting decision. If one I'm not entirely sure I'm convinced by. So it'd be interesting to see what sort of readings we get on the boats and what sort of defects we find that might've been caused by a lack of anodes. It'll be interesting to see. Let's go and find out. So here we are, right at the stern end, starboard side. And what I've got here is some readings I've taken on the bottom plate. So 9.8 means 9.8 mil, 9.6. We have measured a pit, which was 2.8 millimeters deep. So a 2.8 millimeter pit, with the steel next to it at 9.8, gives you a pit depth reading of just seven millimeters. So that's 30% thickness loss in the pits in 16 years. It's much the same story, port side at the aft end. Here we've got another great example. Pit plate reading of 9.4, adjacent pit depth of 3.1 gives you 6.3. That's a 37% thickness loss in 16 years. That's a lot of steel to lose. Now this is exactly where you'd expect there to be an anode because there's a lot of dissimilar metals here with the prop and the shaft and everything else. Here we are, port side of the 12 meter station. So that's around about two thirds of the way along. But again here you can see base plate thickness of 8.8 with an adjacent pit of 2.6. That leaves you just 6.2 in the pit. That's a lot of steel to lose in 16 years. And I can't help but think having anodes fitted midships here would have done at least something to reduce that rate of thickness loss. There are many naysayers who say you shouldn't fit anodes midships as they'll just get rubbed off or snag on things. And yes, that's a risk, but there are plenty of low profile anodes on the market that reduce that risk. It's also possible to fit the midships with a bit of forethought and effort by the boat builder as this neat midships anode set into a small recess on the chine shows. And remember, an anode only has an effective range or throw of about seven times its own length, so they typically need fitting every four metres to be effective and to protect the whole hull rather than just having a pair at the front and the back. And please, please, please don't paint your anodes. It stops them working completely. If you're doing the work yourself, mask them up or rub soap all over them which will wash off when back in the water. Here we are port side towards the bow and it's much the same situation here. Base plate reading of 8.6, adjacent pit of 2.4 gives you 6.2, 38% thickness loss. Similar situation there. Now when we go and have a look underneath you'll see there's quite a lot of shiny silver patches and pits and that probably tells us all we need to know about whether anodes would have been a good thing or not. So now I'm lying on the floor looking up at the bottom plate roughly midships. Here is a pit of 2.7 millimeters in what is, in most places, a reasonably good looking plate. Note the small section that's been scraped along something with the scratches lined up fore and aft and running at 90 degrees to the plate weld. A closer look at the plate shows there's actually quite a lot more going on here and that there are several areas of corrosion. Now these don't all look the same and there is clearly more than one mechanism at work here as is often the case. In simple terms there are three main types of corrosion I'm looking for in a survey. The first is general corrosion of steel, resulting in the rough surface and flakes of brown rust that most people are familiar with. There are several possible mechanisms for general corrosion and in itself it is a huge topic. The second main type of corrosion is galvanic corrosion caused by dissimilar metals that are electrically connected through the water or electrolytic corrosion which can be caused by the presence of some form of electrical stimulus. The third main type of corrosion is microbiological corrosion that can be caused by one of several bacteria and microorganisms. Interestingly, on this plate, I think we have something from all three groups. If we take a look at the size and shape of the pits, we can see that they are either narrow, roughly circular and deep, or wide, irregular and shallow. This gives us a really useful indicator of what might be going on. Narrow and deep pits are usually associated with galvanic or electrolytic corrosion, whilst shallow and wide are typically caused by microbiologically induced corrosion, or MIC for short. The colour of the wide and shallow pits also gives us more information about what type of microbiological organisms are causing the corrosion. Where we have shiny silvery patches, this is typically caused by Theobacillus ferrooxidans, which is a sulphur oxidising bacteria, whilst the yellow and brown patches are usually Gallianella fruginia, which is an iron oxidizing bacterium. Here we can see areas of general corrosion, in large part caused by the steel being in the water with little or no paint to protect it. 
In this image, we can make out the narrow and deep pits caused by galvanic or electrolytic corrosion. As I haven't been inside the hold yet, my initial guess is that this is probably galvanic. But if it turns out that I'm beneath the shower sump pump or that may, might, might make electrolytic corrosion more likely, although it's quite rare to find true electrolytic corrosion. Here we can easily make out the wide and shallow pits typical of microbiological corrosion, as well as the two main colours present, giving us an indication that more than one type of MIC is at work. Treating microbiological corrosion is relatively simple, but not many yards are equipped or allowed to carry out full treatments. In essence, the plate needs to be high pressure washed and then be coated with a good quality biocide. The two main choices are sodium hypochloride, or as it's more commonly known, bleach, or a 70% or stronger isopropyl alcohol, such as hospital grade sanitizer. Rinse thoroughly and then repaint with at least four coats or to a thickness of 250 microns. There is another form of corrosion that I've found a few times while surveying narrowboats in recent years. These are corrosion byproducts known as rust tubercles, which are an advanced stage marine growth, leading to the formation of oxygen concentration cells. These can contain pockets of anaerobic, often mildly acidic, stagnant water. They become self-perpetuating organic colonies, and the resulting corrosion can sometimes, but not always, lead to deep pitting of 5mm or more and pinholes forming, which can perforate the steel plate. Rust tubercles are relatively easy to identify by the brown exterior surface of true rust, Fe203, and the black interior bottom surface of magnetic iron oxide, which is Fe304. On those hulls where I've noted them, they were typically present in moderate density of around about 30 or so per square metre, with sizes ranging from 30 millimetres to over 100 millimetres in diameter. They're hard to mistake for anything else, and getting one off the plate intact is very satisfying. Well, for me at least, anyway, but maybe not for the owner. And you can see they're about the size of an oyster, but alas, very rarely with a pearl inside. For these, the best option is to shot blast the hull back to bare bright steel, or SA 2.5, to be more specific, and then to repaint with good quality two-pack epoxy. And remember, most insurance companies get twitchy once it gets down to four or 3.5 millimeters. It depends on what it started with. So keeping that bottom plate clean, painted, and free of corrosion is imperative if you want your narrowboat to survive for decades to come. There are three things you can do to reduce the rate at which your bottom plate disappears. Number one, start with a nice thick 10 mil plate. Number two, Paint it with good quality paints and keep it painted. And number three, fit some anodes on your boat. And that way you're gonna keep at bay all of the major types of corrosion that are gonna result in thickness loss of the bottom plate. It's not rocket science. And it's interesting, this boat, you know, it's done 16 years of service with no anodes. The bottom plate is down to just above six mil in places. Had it been a six mil plate to start with, the vessel would have required complete overplating. So we'd be down to two mil in the pits. And it wouldn't have surprised me to find some holes. So an interesting observation on a narrowboat never fitted with anodes. Anyway, hope you found that very useful. If you did, check out this video here. What was it here? I can never tell which way it is. One of those two videos will be something worth watching where I found thin steel on a narrowboat during a survey. Thanks for watching. See you next time.